Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-black bloody vampires deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a ton of the new vampires from Crimson Vow that work with the blood mechanic. Taking a look at one of the payoff cards, Voldaren Bloodcaster, a 2-mana two 2-1 two vampire wizard with flying, saying whenever the Bloodcaster or another non-token creature we control dies, create a blood token, which is an artifact we can pay 1 mana, tap, discard a card and sacrifice it to draw a card. And whenever we create a blood token, if we control 5 or more blood tokens, we transform Bloodcaster into Bloodbat Summoner, a 3-3 flyer, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, up to one target blood token we control becomes a 2-2 black bat creature with flying and haste in addition to its other types. Then another great payoff for the deck is the Maid of Dishonor at 4 mana, a 4-5 legendary vampire, and when it enters a battlefield or another vampire enters a battlefield under our control, we get to create a blood token, and this only triggers once each turn. Then for 2 mana we can sacrifice another creature or a blood token, and then each opponent loses 2 life and we gain 2 life, so an excellent way to close out the game. Then we also have the Falconrath Forebear, a 3 mana, 3 1 vampire with flying that cannot block, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we get to create a blood token, and for just one black mana, we can sacrifice two blood tokens to return the Forebear from our graveyard to the battlefield, so a nice recursive threat that can generate additional blood tokens. Then another great incentive to play this type of strategy is access to Vampire's Vengeance as potentially a one-sided sweeper, a 3-mana instant dealing 2 damage to each non-vampire creature, and we get to create a blood token as well, so this will shine against any white aggressive deck that has lots of low toughness creatures. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck at 1 mana, still have Falconrath Pitfighter, the 2-1, that for 2 mana can discard a card and sacrifice a vampire to draw 2 cards, can only be activated if an opponent lost life this turn. And this is also a great combo with our next vampire, the Voldaren Epicure, a 1-1 that when it enters a battlefield deals 1 damage to each opponent, and we get to create a blood token, so this can potentially enable the pit fighter, and then the 1-1 we don't mind sacrificing to potentially loot and draw some more cards. Then we also have Play with Fire as a cheap removal spell dealing 2 damage to any target, and if we're targeting an opponent we also get to scry 1. Then at 2 mana we've got a bit more removal with Infernal Grasp to destroy creatures that maybe we won't be able to kill with our cheap burn spells or the Vampire's Vengeance, so this can destroy any creature at the cost of 2 life. And then another removal spell in creature form is the Blood Tithe Harvester, a 2 mana 3 2 that when it enters the battlefield creates a blood token, and we can tap and sacrifice the Harvester, and then target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is twice the number of blood tokens we control. So a nice removal effect, stapled onto a 3-2 creature that can apply a bit of pressure. Then at 3 mana, besides Vengeance and Forebear, we also have two copies of Florian, a Voldaren Scion, a 3-3 legendary vampire noble with first strike, saying at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the total amount of life lost by your opponents this turn, get to exile one of those cards, and then cast it this turn, so it can provide a bit of card advantage. And then at 4 mana we've got our Maid of Dishonor, and then the mana base also includes 4 copies of a Voldaren Estate, a land that can tap for colorless mana, can pay 1 life and add 1 mana of any color to spend on vampire spells, or we can pay 5 mana and tap it to create a blood token, and this ability costs 1 generic mana less to activate for each vampire we control, so it can potentially be activated on the cheap if we have a bit of a board presence, and will complement our blood payoff cards nicely, like the Maid of Dishonor can drain the opponent for 2, can help get back our forebear from the graveyard, or we can eventually turn it into a 2-2 bat with the summoner. And then we also have some creature lands with two copies of Den of the Bugbear and two copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Our deck does require more red mana early to play our one drops, so Den of the Bugbear is a little bit better there, but I think overall Hive of the Eye Tyrant is a better creature land once you are in the late game and can activate this. The menace is quite useful as well as potentially the graveyard hate. And then we've got four of each basic land, and then some dual lands here with the Pathway and the Haunted Ridge. So this is definitely more of a blood synergy deck compared to our last vampire deck we covered, which was a little bit more mid-rangey with cards like Sorin, and we were splashing white for Edgar as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. 
bit of removal in creature form here with our Harvester, which also powers up our Bloodcaster. Especially sacrificing Harvester with Bloodcaster in play leaves behind an extra Blood Token, which is nice. So... Turn 2 could play the Bloodcaster first. Um, if I play Harvester, I could maybe kill the Curtains if I play a second Harvester. Although we're probably going to want to play Forebear on 3. So I might want to just get in some evasive damage in the meantime with Bloodcaster into Forebear. It's your opponent on a black kind of controlling deck. They've got their own Bloodcaster, alright. So, am I okay trading Bloodcasters? Probably not when I have double Harvester. And then probably still play Forebear to be mana efficient. And then I'll have to decide between red or black, which is a tough choice. I think black might get the nod here, since it also activates the forebear to bring it back from the graveyard. And then if they want to transform curtains, that's fine. And then hopefully next turn we can double spell. Right, it's going to be a Null Priest and a play with fire. So I could play my two removal spells, in which case we would kill the Bloodcaster first. I'm okay with the four better trades, I think. So at that point I would prefer just playing another Harvester. So, hit for three. And we'll get a Blood Token either way. And then I would have the option of bringing back the Forebear end of turn, which does seem appealing here since we'll get to connect and make more blood tokens later. Alright, opponent's black-white. And a sparring regimen, okay. So we can still kill the Null Priest after it picks up a plus one counter at least with Play With Fire. Although we could also kill it with Harvester. So we'll bring back Forebear. And then we've got plenty of options. Yeah, I could attack make a blood token with forebear and then use the harvester to finish off null priest which also triggers bloodcaster make an extra blood token and then i can still play an additional harvester on top or i could keep up infernal grasp to maybe kill the curtains before they can take away the grasp with it which is also reasonable so let's try that send these two And then Harvester kills Null Priests. And I'll just keep up three mana. Our opponent casts Environmental Sciences to get a land. So no Transformed Curtains this turn. I think I'm still okay grasping it to use my mana efficiently here. Alright, and then we get to attack, play a Maid of Dishonor. And then we're getting close to transforming the Bloodcaster as well. And then I have to decide if I want to keep up Forebear in the event of a Sweeper, or play with Fire. Probably more relevant to keep up Forebear's ability, I think. Then we've got plenty of creature lands to apply pressure with as well. And the Maid of Dishonor could drain the opponent to death. So if they don't wipe the board, next turn I could play Harvester, gives me blood token number 5, 
transforms Bloodcaster, token turns into a bat, and then I can also activate the maid at least once. So, we'll see what they do. Five mana. And the Spider Queen to play. Okay. So play Harvester, and then get two more blood tokens, get to turn one into a 2-2, two -two. and then what happens if I send everyone at my opponents, they could block block take five, I can drain twice with maid, so not quite lethal but I could maybe finish him off with a play with fire. So I think it's reasonable to send everyone face. Our opponent does go for the conservative play. So now do I want to kill Spider Queen with play with fire? I think I do. Alternatively, I guess if I just start going upstairs with uh, Maid of Dishonor's ability between Play With Fire and my creature land, I should still be able to finish them off. So there might not be a need for it. Pass it back. Opponents at six. It's bold to bargain with me. Definitely could have taken a few different lines this game, but uh, still pretty confident about our position. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. So we got to see all our blood synergies in action here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and we've got a keeper. Get to curve my creature lands into a haunted ridge. Everything comes into play untapped. Facing a sentinel. Do I want to kill it with a play with fire? If we're up against mono green, there's higher value targets like potentially a sculptor of winter or a wolf token. Although killing the sentinel is not a bad idea. So it's a close call. I guess we can keep the Sentinel in play for a turn, and maybe next turn play with fire. We'll see. All right, it's going to be a pack leader. That one we cannot uh, kill with our play with fire, sadly. Could see a Blizzard Brawl. Fair enough. All right, so slightly punished for waiting on the removal. Now do I kill Sentinel? Probably, given that they're less likely to have one of the aforementioned two drops. And then next turn I'll have to decide which three drop to play first. Maybe Forbear into Florian can provide a bit of card advantage the turn we play Florian. But Mono Green's going to be a tough matchup. Just the way our removal kind of lines up with the opponent's stuff. We've got cheap burn spells and a two damage sweeper meant for mono white, but those are not going to be ideal against the big green creatures. Our forebear cannot block. So I think I'm desperate enough that I have to play Florian in the hopes of just blocking the pack leader, but if our opponent has any additional interaction, be it another Blizzard Brawl or Snakeskin Veil, we're probably going to lose. But I can't let them attack unopposed with pack leader and draw card. So it looks like another fight spell incoming, perhaps. Alright, just a tracker. So it looks like Florian might be holding off the pack leader at least. But the troll still gets in for four. Can play a bloodcaster. Or we can play Forbear. Not planning on double blocking the troll anytime soon. There's also Faceless Haven to worry about. So opponent could start going wide with their entire team. 
but it's not like the Bloodcaster blocks all that profitably. So Forebear still seems like the most mana efficient. But uh, I'm pretty scared here that we're just going to die to an all-out attack. Opponent could put me to two life if they send everyone, including Haven. Oof, unnatural growth. Yeah, that's probably game over here. Alright, GG's. Can uh, block this, take 14. So excellent curve from the green deck. Which is a tough matchup to begin with. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn one Pit Fighter. And then the Pit Fighter can help sacrifice the Epicure as well to the ability. Well, let's see what we're up against. Alright, blue green. So some sort of ramp deck. Don't see that very often. So we can hit for two. And then I might want to play this on reds, so I can eventually activate Den of the Bugbear. Just means I'll have to pay a bit of life to play my Florian and Maid of Dishonor. And then I'm probably not going to sacrifice the token, but we might want to kill like a Lotus Cobra or a Root Coil Creeper if those show up. Right, Delver of Secrets, I see. I think I've seen this type of deck before. It's basically a blue-green spells deck with cards like the Dragon Guard Elite and, uh, of course, Delver of Secrets. Yeah, I guess that's a fine target for removal now. Since they also have protection between Wild Shape and Snakeskin Veil, so don't want to let them untap with it necessarily. And then I could sacrifice the Epicure right now. And then play a Pit Fighter, or we could play a Florian, which is also reasonable. Let's go with Florian. And then maybe next turn Florian can find a land to play Maid, or we can use the Pit Fighter to sacrifice Epicure. But yeah, opponent has seen enough already on the back foot against an aggressive deck. And uh, that deck can be a little bit awkward when it falls behind. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Up against Mono Whites. All right, let's see if we can draw our Sweeper in this matchup. Take one. And then I'm happy trading off the Bloodcaster early on if that means taking a bit less damage. So I could double block the hopeful initiative the attack with both. Although I would lose both my vampires. Ooh. Adlin. That's gonna hurt. Yeah, that's uh, kind of a rough start. Don't have any particularly good blocks, neither this turn or next turn. But I guess we'll trade. And Adlin also survives our sweeper. They've got the Faceless Haven, so yeah, painful start. There's our Sweeper, does cost one more. For now I could try and double block Adlin and try and hold on. Although it would have been nice to transform Bloodcaster. Right, Brutal Cathar, gonna prevent that from happening, although we'll get our creature back if we can cast Vengeance. And then for now, probably just take it. I really need a land here. Comes into play untapped. We found it. And then I'm forced to cast it now to prevent Brutal Cathar from transforming. So, 
any reason to attack first. Probably gonna need Pit Fighter on defense, so let's cast it now. Alright, so we're still in the game. Next turn, Made of Dishonor will be a solid blocker. And that will also transform Bloodcaster if they don't force a trade here. Opponent will go for the trade. Do I accept? If I don't, I'm taking five. It is still tempting to keep Bloodcaster around since next turn is going to be a 3 3 flyer. Can make another 2 2 to block with. And then Maid can trade for Adlin, and we've got a backup. So, tempted to just take five. Do I want to trade Pit Fighter for the 1 1 is another question, I guess. Now we'll keep it. And then can't really afford to attack here, I don't think. If Sentinel gets the Hexproof from Black, we can still block with the Pit Fighter at least. Ooh, Valor stance. That's painful. Now we might be dead. Well, that's unfortunate. Opponent had kind of the ideal start. Almost managed to claw our way back, but a Valor stance. Not a card you encounter very often. Gets the job done here. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Epicure into Bloodcaster with a Maid of Dishonor waiting in the wings. Now let's see what we're playing against. Swamp. Alright, so probably not the best matchup for double play with fire for opponents kind of a black controlling deck. But we'll see. Right, check for traps probably takes her maid. So we're left with two copies of play with fire. The uh, estate we're close to activating, so I guess I don't need to show them quite yet. Since I'm not planning to discard any lands to the blood token I have in play. And then next turn I could make a blood token with it. Card we don't want to see is Meat Hook Massacre. I think I still hang on to my play with fire. All right, the forebear's not bad either. So now I probably want to keep black mana untapped, so I can maybe get back the forebear end of turn, which seems more relevant than keeping up play with fire. All right, opponent's gonna grasp it, which will make a token. So less likely that there's going to be a Meat Hook Massacre in my future, which is a good thing. Path of Peril. Okay, that works. Get two more blood tokens, so I don't feel bad getting back the Forebear now. And we can keep up the pressure. So already back up to four blood tokens, should we find another bloodcaster. But we can also start looting away some of our play with fire. But our opponent concedes, can just burn them out next turn. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. It's gonna be a little bit painful to start out with double Voldaren estate. But I think it's worth it to still curve out here. As opposed to playing a Haunted Ridge to play it slow and save ourselves a bit of life. Okay, and then... Do I want Bloodcaster or Harvester? I think Harvester first, and then next turn I might be able to Bloodcaster, Sack Harvester, get an extra token out of the deal. Especially against Monogreen, being able to take out an early pack leader 
to prevent them from using a Blizzard Brawl is going to be important. Opponent passes, so no plays just yet. Which means we can add more to the board. So hit for 5, play Epicure Bloodcaster, seems good. And then we've got the opponents next to large creatures covered. So nice start here. Well, let's see how they respond. Maybe a troll. Yep. So we don't have to use Harvester if we want to keep up the pressure. Although the upside of using Harvester is that I get to play Florian, which adds another 3-3 to the board, basically. And then Florian can help us hit a land drop. And we also get to make an extra blood token, so I think it's worth it to uh, play Florian here. Attack. And we'll take a land. we found a play with fire instead. I also could have played this on red and cast a play with fire. So our opponent's at 7. 5 mana total here. So let's see if they can stabilize. A Seagust Chariot would go a long way. It's going to be a Cemetery Prowler into another spell most likely. And Blizzard Brawl. Yeah, wouldn't be able to stop that, sadly. Do get an extra token, however. Alright, so I can transform my summoner here by making an extra blood token, which seems worth it. And then I'll hang on to Infernal Grasp. I could Grasp now, but seems pretty likely that our opponent has a Snakeskin Veil available. Which would make the play of Infernal Grasp quite painful. So yeah, we'll just take to the Skies and then we'll have two Lethal Flyers next turn. Plus maybe a third. So yeah, we'll just send our Flyers. Ooh, a wild shape to give it reach. Fair enough. So I guess now we'll grasp my response. So wild shape also could have given hexproof for what it's worth. So where we failed against mono green before, now we actually drew with the harvester and infernal grasp, which line up much better than our two damage effects. So bloodbath summoner gets the job done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand, especially if we're up against like a mono-white creature deck. And then I guess we'll hang on to the pathway. Alright, snow-covered planes is a good sign. And a Sun Gold Sentinel, so Vengeance is looking good. Although for now I don't mind Harvester plus Epicure. Develop our board a little bit more. Alright, Adlin survives her vengeance, but Harvester can deal with it, as well as block the 1-1 one -one for now. Well, we certainly drew a lot of uh, copies of Vampire's Vengeance, so we can only use Harvester as a sorcery. Might as well use it now, then. And hang on to Vampire's Vengeance, and hit for 3.
All right, familiar walks into our Vampire's Vengeance. And Elite Spellbinder is not going to be happy here. So get another blood token. And next turn we could transform the Bloodcaster. So... Let's see, cannot quite use the estate, but I could just cast Vengeance just to purely transform the Bloodcaster. I think that might be worth it. The alternative, I guess, would be just playing Pit Fighter, which is also fair. If our opponent has a removal spell for Bloodcaster, this might be a little bit excessive. So maybe going for Pit Fighter here is fine. Could have also played Pit Fighter using the Voldaren Estate, and then attacked, sacrificed the Epicure to um, the Mountain here, to the Pit Fighter's ability, which would have given me a fifth Blood Token with a Bloodcaster, as well as draw two, and then next turn I would have been able to transform it, so maybe that was actually the preferred line of play. But yeah, our opponent, having seen Double Vengeance, has given up. So yeah, we lost to Mono White after a good curve out, we lost to Mono Green after they curved out nicely, but we got a revenge after drawing the better half of our deck, in the case of Mono White, our Sweeper on time, and against Mono Green, the Harvester plus our Infernal Grasp line up a lot better than our Burn Spells. And the same can be said for the Control matchups, where drawing our removal spells isn't particularly helpful, but if we draw a creature like the Forebear that can keep coming back from the graveyard, we'll have a much better chance. So overall, the deck seems decent, but by no means overpowered, so just a fine deck to have fun with. Maybe not the best for ranked play, but certainly a nice deck to try out if you drafted a lot of Crimson Vow, just to have fun with in the play queue and in some other standard events. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.